morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. Looks like the left side winning. Uh, Y'all gonna have to recruit some folks to come sit with you. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn. Praise him, praise him. with me. Heavenly Father, as we gather again in your house, I pray, Lord, that we might have come with open hearts, ready to receive the message for the hour. Uh, Lord, that we might be attentive to the still, quiet voice of God. And that, Lord, that we'd be ready to experience your grace as we give up those things that have become a hindrance and, uh, Lord, cause the division between ourselves and our God. Lord, Lord, I pray especially for one that may be listening today that's not, a, uh, not saved. Father, we know that Jesus Christ died upon the cross for the sins of the world, and he rose on the third day. And it is that triumphant victory that we must believe and receive into our hearts. And I pray, God, that someone might give themselves to you today. We thank you, Lord, for our church. We thank you for the willingness to work and the volunteers and the leadership that is here. We pray, oh God, for our Vacation Bible School that's just around the corner. Uh, Lord, we ask you now that you prepare all of the hearts of those that will be involved, whether teaching or serving or just shaking hands and greeting people. Father, I pray that we work together to, for the world to see Jesus in us. Now, Lord, we're thankful for our, our country. And as we come to this Memorial uh, Day weekend, this time of, of recognition and memorable uh, of those, our memory of those that have given their lives for this country and for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have today. We are, Lord, eternally thankful. God bless America. We know, Lord, that she's not close to what she needs to be. Lord, I know that there are many that are on the pathway of righteousness. Lord, may we labor together uh, to further the gospel and bring this country back to you. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome, everyone, to Raptist Christian Church. Thank you so much for being here today uh, on this Memorial Day weekend. And uh, I hope that you've had a good weekend so far. Maybe you're, you've got plans uh, for tomorrow with family and friends. And, and I hope 
that you do, but I hope that you'll take time out to, uh, to recognize and pray for our country, for the families who lost loved ones, uh, achieving the, the, uh, the freedoms that we have today. You know, I came in this morning, and you know, I, I knew what the theme was for Vacation Bible School, but I hadn't thought a lot about the theme per se. I've been praying a lot about Bible school, and I hope that you will as well. But some of you may remember, it's been quite a number of years ago, but it was a it was a cult of people. I forget now who the leader was of this cult, and there have been so many through the years. But you know, there were some aliens that were supposed to fly and kind of beam them up, Scotty. Do you remember that? And I walked in for just a minute, and I said, I hope nobody thinks that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's not it, folks. It's just a vacation Bible school thing. We're going to lift up Jesus this upcoming, or next week, right? Or the week after. We're going to tell them about the Lord and the truth that comes in uh, only in the Word of God. Uh, just a couple of announcements that I would like to remind us of. First of all, uh, right after church, there will be a BBS crew leader uh, meeting. Uh, they'll be, I guess, giving out some of the lessons and that type of thing, questions you may have. And, um, and then uh, on Wednesday night, and I've got a topic. Uh, I'm going to teach on heaven uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and so I hope that you'll come to be a part of these services on Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, we'll be studying about, about heaven. And then we'll, uh, next Sunday, we'll have uh, June the 4th, we'll have an annual congregational meeting uh, right after the services. And then, of course, as I have already said, uh, let's get ready for Bible school. Let's pray, pray, pray. It's a wonderful. I still believe the greatest evangelistic tool in the church is vacation Bible school, reaching these young ones while they're young and their, their hearts are, are, are ready and their minds are pliable. And we can teach them and point them in the way of Jesus. So, you know, I hope you say Jesus' name 2,000 times during that week. Tell them about Jesus. Saturate them with Jesus. Uh, remind them about Jesus. Because that's what it's all about, is telling others about him. All right, any other announcements at this time? Fred, if you would, come and lead us in America the Beautiful, and we'll follow that with the pledge and just a, a few uh, recognitions about the Lord. Let's all stand up.
of the United States of America, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I'd like to start out by just uh, asking you if, if you represent a family member who gave uh, his or her life fighting for the freedoms that we have in any branch of the armed services. Do you have a family member of anyone that gave their life, that died while on the battlefield or while serving active? Anyone? How about friends? Friends. Okay, all right. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anyone else with family members? All right, I'll go back again to friends. I had a man, uh, high school classmate. Um, I wore a MIA bracelet for him for years. Mm. To this day, all of his remains in MIA is the Vietnam War. Wow, wow. Thank you, Linda. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Kevin? Thank you for that. All right, anyone else? If you Ryan King, just remember these, these families. How about you? Active service in any branch of the armed forces of our United States of America, if you would please stand. If you have served in any any branch, please stand. <coughs> Thank you very much. Before we continue in our worship service, I'd like for us to take just a moment and let's, uh, let's pray and give God thanks for these that have served and let's pray for the families of those that uh, have lost loved ones and the continued blessings that God gives America. I'm telling you, I know that God is blessing America because the condition that she's in, it, it would have done fell apart if God didn't still have his sovereign hand on this country, on this world, uh, it would have already fallen apart. And So just give God the thanks. It's not all that it is desired to be, but we can see uh, by experiencing the new rising of a sun that God has his sovereign hand on our world. Let us pray. Father, we again come to this moment of which we remember those that have fought for the freedoms of this country, for the freedom for us to come uh, unhindered into this church house and Lord to choose to, to worship our sovereign God we pray Lord though, for those uh, whose family members lost their lives uh, as they fought for something that they desperately believed in and, and, and literally laid their life out for and God we see so much in the way of mockery in our country today not only against what the united uh, states armed forces should be like but we see a, a mockery of, of Christian values we see a mockery of, of, of ethical living and moral living and Lord uh, a mockery of those who use the barometer of the Holy Bible to measure our lives and compare ourselves to and Father I know that one day all this is going to come to pass I know Lord that one day these mouths will be closed and these this rhetoric will cease as our Heavenly Father will come back to this earth and set up a kingdom for a thousand years. And then, Lord, this old earth will pass away and we'll live forever and ever and ever beyond infinity with our Lord there in the place called heaven. God, I just ask you today that we might be right with you, that we would be people that are patriots, true to the, uh, the founding fathers, even though they were not perfect. But I believe that they were much more intelligent than some that we have today. They knew things. They, they loved this country. And I question the love of some when it comes to this great land of ours. God, I know that your power is greater than any administration, any political force, any entity that has a, a backwards agenda. And so, Lord, we just need to keep our trust and our faith in you, never giving up. 
But as we raise the flag and we pledge allegiance, I pray, God, that first and foremost, that we'll hide ourselves behind the banner of the cross, that we would know our protection cometh from above, and that we would forge ahead that God might be glorified. Lord, have your will and way in this church. Bless all of our hearts. We pray in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Our communion hymn this morning is on page uh, 324. <coughs> when I survey this wondrous cross, if you will, let's stand as we sing. <laughs> morning again. Good morning. <coughs> I want to open this morning with Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. With tomorrow being Memorial Day, we are reminded what our beloved military has done for us. Many died that we may have the freedoms we enjoy every day. Those living today know how precious these freedoms are and the cost that was paid. When we partake of communion, let it be a reminder of the sacrifice our Lord made by laying down his life that we may have everlasting life. Confessing our sins and accepting Christ, our Lord, can totally cleanse and make us whole. I want to read from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new being. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Each Sunday here at Erastus, we, as we partake of the communion, we do so by acknowledging our Lord for the blood he shed and for the remission of our sin. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we humbly come around this table today, 
Let's look at your sacrifice of what you've done, how you lived, how you thought, how your body was beaten, how your blood was dripped on the ground, how you died a cruel death. So as we take up this bread, which represents your broken body, and as we take up this cup today, which represents your blood that dripped on the ground for each and every one of us sins. Let us always remember what you gave for each and every one of us. All we have to do is come to you. Last name I pray. Amen. Amen. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of this vine until the day that I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. At this time I'll ask if you would please join me as we pray over the tithes and receipts of our church. Heavenly Father, we now come to a moment in our church worship where we're able to give back that which belongs to you. And Father, I pray that every person here, Lord, would give uh, sacrificially, give obediently uh, that tithe uh, that belongs to the Lord. And then, Father, may we always be good stewards of those finances, uh, using money by faith, reaching out beyond the walls of this church, and uh, taking the gospel throughout this community and in this world. May we be a, a, a mouthpiece unto Jesus Christ of the greatness uh, that you have and that you've shared with us in the days of our life. Lord, may this church always be a beacon of grace and of power. And uh, Lord, uh, a church that's inspired uh, by the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we do that so often when we, we give something that, that means a lot. And, and money means something, Lord. We can't pay our bills without it. We can't do other things without it. But, Lord, tithe belongs to you. And I pray, Lord, that we would give it, knowing, Lord, that there's no way we can outgive God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our prayer hymn this morning is uh, on page 340. Uh, <coughs> turn your eyes upon Jesus. We're going to sing that little chorus through twice. <clears throat>
have any prayer requests. You know, from Carolyn Barnett? Yes. Okay. So Martha has a great niece that's going to have surgery on Thursday. Yes. They're going to put two uh, rods in her back for scoliosis, right? Yes, sir. She's All right. 16 years old. All right. That's fight. Henry Fight has brain cancer. Uh. Also on my list, I've got a silent request uh, for somebody that's got a co-worker. Uh, I got Marjorie Bra uh, <coughs> Bailey. She has a blood clot. This, this is a lady of 80-something years old, and she has a blood clot. Also, Sandra Adams' family. Let's pray for the Betty Beecham family. And uh, well, I got uh, on here some travel mercies for Barbara. She's going to be traveling out of state. So, uh, also, uh, yes, Wayne. Uh, All right. Uh, Okay, as we talked last week about Valerie, and she was going to get some test re results back, she has a mask in her chest. She's going to have some tests run next week, and then she's going to have some surgery. Uh, it's a very serious operation. So let's continue to pray for her. Let's pray for her family. And everyone, let's, let's especially pray for the surgeons. Any time that you're opened up is a serious situation. So let's pray for those. Let's pray for all the caretakers. And, and all of us in here have had loved ones that has went through surgery. And sometimes it is a stressful situation on everyone. So let's, let us remember that. Let's remember the whole family. You know, uh, this week has been a... a a week of joy for them and their son graduating. But then a burden of what the family's going through. Lisa has the test done on Tuesday from the stomach. It's positive. Just pray that everything comes out all right. Get you through here. Get you through. All right. Lisa Gillespie has some tests run, and she's been having some trouble with her, with her stomach. Is that right, Greg? Yes. All right. Continue to remember. Yes, Mr. Geneva. I wanted to just say that uh, our granddaughter is pregnant right now. Uh, they searched her pancreas and her eyes, and they said that she has cancer. And All right, Ms. Geneva's, I, I'm just going on this from, from what I remember. Ms. Geneva's niece, granddaughter, granddaughter has, has lost sight in one eye, right? And then she was having surgery on the other eye. And this surgery come through successfully. So what does that tell you? God, God answers prayers. God answers prayers. So let us always remember that. Anything else? All right, Daryl's got some test results coming back on, on his blood test. Okay.
All right, so he's, he's getting some results on his, on his prostate cancer. Yes. All right? And there's lots of other people out there that have cancer and different things. And as we, we looked at Memorial Day, how many people gave their lives for us? Picture one thing. A foxhole. Two men in it. One died. One didn't. My grandfather lived. His buddy died. God has plans for us in different ways. I don't know that man's name. I never heard my granddaddy speak of it. But he lost a friend and a buddy. And there's been a many one out there that has dug a foxhole that has lost their life in the same way with a buddy beside them. So this Memorial Day, think of your freedom. Think of what somebody else paid for your life. With that, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come around here today with prayers, petitions, some serious issues with family members of this church. Some have lost loved ones. Some are going to have surgery. Some don't know the outcome. But as we all go to different things in our life, one person will not turn his back on us. That is Jesus Christ. He will always be there with you in the good times and in the bad times. So let us always remember that. Let's be with our nation. Let's be with our veterans. And let's be with all the families that have lost loved ones in wars and different things. Not just wars, but different things of veterans that have lost their lives and other things. Let us always remember that, Lord. Let's remember the lost. Thank you for our freedom. Thee, God, and direct us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Y'all pardon me, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, you can have to share it with me. I'll you. share it with you. You better share it with me, brother. Put your glasses on.
Thank you, choir. There for a minute, I felt like I was acting like a little puppy. I didn't know where to go. I knew I knew the course of that song, but I don't know the verses very well. So, Thank you, choir. That's a beautiful song, beautiful message, and job well done. We appreciate that very much. Cooper, thank you for playing this morning. And uh, this morning, if you would, let's take God's Word, turn to the New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter, uh, chapter 13 and verse number 11. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11. You know, with light of information that we have received today and reminiscing back to a time that was very difficult, time of war, time of great poverty, you know, we're, we're probably, well, I, I figure we're probably the, probably the richest country in the world and certainly the richest that we've ever been. We just don't know how to act with it. But there was a time when our country was poverty ridden, a time I can remember in the first church I pastored, you know, the piano player I had at that time was 97 years old and, 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 and she was a go-getter and she could still play that piano. But those folks, uh, we're talking about 20, some 29 years ago, they knew what it was like to be in the Depression. And uh, they had talked to me about it. They would say things, you know, in Bible study and, and stuff. So, you know, I, I certainly didn't experience it, but, but I have a, a mental capacity to understand it. And uh, we live in a rich country. We have, really, if you think about it, and please take this the right way, rich places to worship. Not all over the world do people have a brick building with nice pews, pads, climate-controlled environment. You know, there's some churches that meet under the cover of darkness, under a shelter or shed that's out in the middle of the jungle. I've seen these. I've been a part of these firsthand. You'd be sitting there in the dark, and all of a sudden you would see a lantern coming down the pathway. And it would be the pastor and two or three choir members, and then another lantern, and you know, and then they'd light the lanterns up and hang them in the lean-to against an old rock building. We live in a, a very blessed time, a very blessed time. We need to remember, folks, that God intended in the beginning for our lives to be perfect. It was because and only because the sin that Adam and Eve committed that we ended up under the curse that God placed upon them. But one day, that curse is going to go away. It's never going to be recognized or exercised again in the life of a Christian. That word Christian simply means a follower of a teacher, being a Christian. And Jesus, of course, referred to as rabbi many times throughout his ministry is the teacher that we follow. And I, I just want to plant a seed in your heart this morning because I desperately believe, and it seemed like more so over the past two months than I ever have before, is that so many people are getting this idea about Jesus and it's wrong. When our country went to war, no matter what war it was, a lot of the success and perhaps all the success was founded upon good intel. You had to have good information. You had to know where the enemy was. You, knew, you had to know what artillery the enemy possessed, what they were able to do in a counter of attack if you were to launch an attack on them. Intelligence was very important. People needed to know. And unfortunately, people have given their lives for our country throughout this world. There are other people in other countries that join with the forces of the United States with a like cause and a like mind. They wanted the freedoms that we enjoy today. And those freedoms are frequently dwindling. And not as much as they used to be. And if you don't think your freedoms are being stomped on, you, you take a look at governmental regulations. Tells you what you can do, how you can do it, when you can do it. It tells you how high to jump on your way up. That's freedoms being taken away. 
But there's coming a day, my friends, that the establishment of God's perfection will once again be ours to enjoy. Based on the information that we have gotten this day in the lives of some of our dearly loved family members, church members, others that are under the shadow of this church, I think it's important to remind you that God is ultimately in control. And we need to get it right. God answers prayer in the affirmative. God answers prayer sometimes in the negative. That means no. And God answers prayer sometimes and it's just not time yet. But God always answers your prayer. But we don't always say, well, God is not working if we don't get what we want. God is always working and His will is by far best for our lives. So as we face the days ahead and months ahead and those of you that are having tests and you're having uh, results uh, and surgeries and that type of thing, the great physician sits on the throne of grace. He knows the very hairs that are on upon, upon your head. He, know, he knew you before you were ever placed in the, in the middle of your mother's womb. God knows you better and more intimately and loves you deeper than anybody else. He loves us. So much He gave His Son to die for us. And I said, I think that people are getting this the Jesus idea wrong. Last week we covered about, it's, it's not just about saying a prayer, being saved. Becoming a Christian is not just about reciting something that some church leader or spiritual leader told you to recite. It's, it's, not, it's not in the words that you said, it's the acceptance in your heart as you said them. It means that Jesus goes from someone you know to someone that lives within you. That means that Jesus promises us, promises us eternal life if we'll accept Him in our heart and He becomes a, a part of the daily walk that we venture on every single day, and, and, and we cannot face a day, we cannot go ahead, we cannot make a decision, we cannot do nothing until we consider what Jesus thinks. If you don't have that kind of relationship with Jesus Christ, boy, you're missing out. We, we, have, the, we have the free will to think and to choose. That's what sets us apart from all of others of God's great creation. Is that animals and, and, and reptiles and this type of stuff, they do what God tells them to do. But humanity, God desired to have a creation that would choose to have fellowship with Him. He wanted somebody that would put him first by choice. Not because you had to or because you felt like you were being browbeat. Because you just you wanted to enjoy that love and bask in his presence every single day. And as a born again believer, as a Christian, is that the kind of relationship that you have with Jesus Christ? Is he indeed the shining light? Do you ever give mixed signals in this world that you live in? I've become, over the last two months, I've become more keenly aware of the presence of God in my life in a long time. Just listening to things that I had never heard before and revealing things to me that I had never known before. To the point that I consider the thoughts of Jesus in every action that I do. Do I still do wrong? Absolutely, absolutely. But when I do, it's like I don't have to turn and run down the road to catch Jesus. I turn and bump into His precious face. And I want you to be that way too. I want you to enjoy that daily walk with Him. Not just on Wednesday nights, just not on Sunday mornings or some other time that we deem it necessary to come together as, as church members. But every day, every day, the Lord has made. We have these abilities to choose. I heard a fellow just over the weekend saying 
about everything that he believes that everything happens for a reason. And in the context that this was being said is that, you know, even when we make a mistake, there was a reason for that. I don't believe that. Because I believe that God would desire us not to make mistakes. Now, can God make a pecan pie out of mud pie? Absolutely. But we are given the inadequacy to choose for ourselves. And, and do you think that God is okay? It happened for a reason that, that Adam and Eve sinned? No. The reason that Adam and Eve sinned is because they chose. They were confronted with the idea that you'll be like God. And they jumped on it and bit it hook, line, and sinker. Some of the things that, well, I would say most of the things that we face as a nation have been on the, on the, on, on the, Decisions that people have made without God's influence. And I don't, I don't know what it, why it's like this. Well, I, I guess I do know why, and I just don't understand it. But these uh, transsexuals, folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, God loves them, and the same Jesus that died for you died for them. But it ain't right. God didn't make a mistake when he made a man a man. He made a woman a woman. You see, the God that I worship, the God that I know that is taught of in this Bible does not make mistakes. He is a sovereign God. It is sin that comes in and corrupts. Sin comes in and cripples our lives spiritually. It is the decision to shut out God and, and go forward with our life in our own accord that causes us to get in trouble. And I, I want us all, starting in this pulpit here, I want us all to be able to work hand in hand with the Lord. I want us to be able in this life to finish strong. To, to begin to, in, in all the rhetoric of the world, Britt was talking as we were getting ready for, um, to come out and sing, and Britt was talking about uh, not being able to hear real good when there's a commotion going on, uh, in, 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 like in the background. And I, you know, I resemble that as well. Of course, Lynn and Kay says it's just plain selective and we don't listen. But we need to shut out all the, all the rhetoric and all the noise that's in the world and we need to once again come together and we need to focus on one thing, one man, one ministry, one idea, and that's the one that God has planned out for us. In our scripture in uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11. <clears throat> the Bible says this. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Now is the time. We're not afforded tomorrow. We're not afforded this afternoon. We're not afforded next week, next month. Your plans, your thoughts may come to an end just like that. My poor arthritic knuckles, I can't hardly snap anymore. Just like that, the blink of an eye. But God's plans for you are eternal. They're everlasting. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. He will undergird you and never let you fail. He will be that God that will be closer than a brother. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so, I believe it's time, church, for us to not only here at Erastus, but churches all across America, I, I believe that it's, it's high time that we stop accepting a watered-down presentation of the gospel. It, it's high time that we stop laughing about things that really are not funny when it comes to spiritual ideas and things like that I believe it's time that we got on the straight and narrow I believe that we ought to see it this way and no other way and I believe that with God things are black and white there's no gray areas with God there's no uh, fence straddling with God we need to follow we either follow God or we don't and see a lot of this you know about two months ago, when God really began to impress on my heart, there were was, there was some deficits. I had some chinks in my spiritual armor. 
And I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm not ashamed to admit that. What would be terrible if I was standing up here two months later and I had not heeded that voice of God? God has spoke to my heart in greater ways uh, over the past two months, even in, in the sermons and in the preaching. I have seen things much clearer. It's kind of like looking through a, a, a magnifying glass or a crystal or something like that. And it's just so illuminated the things that God wants us to know and God wants us to hear. And folks, it's time to stop sleeping on our watch. It's time that we, when we went to work, that people knew. Do people know that you're a Christian? Or, or it, under certain circumstances, you know, do you say this word or that word or you laugh at that and you know, you know good and well it's not right, that God's not pleased with that. It's about time that we started plowing the old road right down the middle. The straight and narrow. It's about time that we, that, that, that we did this in the, in the environment of our church. I, I believe that it's, it, it's high time that, that we want nothing but to preach and teach the gospel. Now, that's one thing I'd have to say about our church. I preach messages that would, uh, I guess you'd call it a powder puff sermon. And then I preach those sermons that's kind of like with a little bull whip. You know, you know they're kind of tough to take. And, and at least I hadn't heard anything negative. You have embraced the entirety of the Word of God as He has placed it in my heart as I convey it over to you. But see, here's what I'm thinking. God's revealing to me, God's revealing to me some chinks. He's revealing in me some deficits. If He's dealing with me, Maybe he wants to deal with you. I just don't think that I'm the only one in the room. I don't believe I'm certainly not the only one in this community or the only one that would be in other churches. You see, I've always believed that there's always room to grow closer to the Lord. We need to preach and teach the gospel. It was June 17, 1873 in Dwight L. Moody and the song leader Ira Sankey arrived in, in England, and they had hopes of seeing 10,000 people saved. And so they began to pray for revival. The evangelist prayed, if this revival spirit dies in me, let me die with it. And there were more than 10,000 saved. There were tens of thousands and tens of thousands that surrendered their heart to Jesus Christ under the preaching of Dwight L. Moody in that revival in England in 1873. Folks, there's no substitute for putting God first in your life. You want a, you want a uh, successful Bible school? And, 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 and here's what I want you to understand. I want you to hear me on this. We've heard vacation Bible school so many times in our lives Sometimes when we hear the same things over and over and over again, we get a little bit desensitized by it. Vacation Bible School is a supreme opportunity to see little ones surrender their heart to Jesus. That, that means that we've been an integral part in seeing their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It, it means that we take away from them that, that opportunity for them to go to hell because they are going to heaven. Because they surrendered to Jesus here at this church of which you prayed about and you worked in. What a glorious opportunity. <coughs> I think inspiring worship is something we desperately need in our churches today. I, I, I believe that, first of all, I've always thought that church is much like a bank. If you go to the bank, you don't expect to get anything out of it if you don't put something in it. And I think the same is true when we come to our church. Why do you expect something out of it when you have put absolutely nothing in it? And what I mean by that is, yes, so in your tithe, so in your time, so in your talent, ready in your heart and in your mind and your soul and your being for God to speak to you when you walk through the doors. Have you ever walked through the doors of a church and you thought, oh my goodness, this church is dead, dead, dead? I have. I've walked in and it just absolutely like walking into an old building. 
And I promise you that I had sought the face of God before I would go. And it was dead. You see folks that are getting in tune with God and lining themselves up with God and making real the relationship with Jesus Christ is going to be a church that at least within our heart that we're going to be inspired during the worship time. There was a lady in New Mexico that was frying tortillas one day. And on the bottom of one of those tortillas where the skillet had kind of burned the bread to her and evidently 8,000 other people, it looked like the face of Jesus. So she called all her neighbors, and her neighbors called all their neighbors, and so on and so forth. They built, the, the priest come over, the local priest came over, and they built a shrine, and they put this tortilla in the middle of this shrine, uh, supposedly this made out in this face of Jesus, and that's what they worshipped. They said, this article I read, said that over 8,000 visitors came through in the days that followed after that shrine was built. And probably much more because that's been several years I read that article. The only thing that this tells me is that humanity is hungry for worship. Humanity is hungry for something that is not of this world. And that would be Jesus Christ. That they would worship a piece of bread. And so when we come into our churches, it, we, we owe it to ourselves and we ought to owe it to God that we're going to present ourselves a living, living sacrifice and present ourselves to God and, 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 and be what He wants us to be. I think there ought to be a priority on prayer. The effectual favorite prayer of a righteous man availeth much and your prayer won't meet, meet the ceiling if you're not right with God. If you're not saved, the only prayer God wants to hear from you is the sinner's prayer. If you're out of God's will, what God wants to hear from you first before he does anything else is to hear you say, I'm sorry. And I won't do it anymore. Forgive me. Please forgive me. There are standards and there are prerequisites to prayer. We need to tell the world about Jesus. We need to stop being ashamed and and, and wondering if people are going to be, uh, think we're Bible thumpers or something like that. It doesn't matter to me what they think. But it certainly makes my knees tremble when I think about what God thinks. We need to study the Word of God. Give of our time, talent, and tithe. And we need to live out what our words say. We know the time. If you got any scruples about you at all, whether you consider yourself a theologian or a babe still suckling milk, as far as it pertains to the Word of God, you have to know in your mind that this old world can't go on much longer. There's too many things happening. These Agendas of, of a liberal nation and, and liberal thoughts have gone far past making any sense at all. It's just ridiculous. That you would let a biological man win a national championship swimming against women. Where's the fairness in that? And that's what it's become. Pretty much it. I think I may have mentioned this Wednesday night. And I don't think it was last Sunday. But the professor in New York. Any of y'all hear about the professor in New York where she was walking through the halls of the school and there was a couple of young men or maybe a young man, a young woman had some anti-abortion literature. They wouldn't say anything. They just had the literature there. She came by and she engaged in them in some profanity and everything. And as she walked by, she just threw all the books and everything, flipped them up in the air and walked off, and they were blurping everything that she said. Later on that day or the next day, it came back. It made the news again. This uh, a reporter had gone to her door to try to get an interview, and she comes out, steps out right outside her door with a machete and places it against his neck. Place it against his neck, man. Now, I, get, I suppose that, 
you know, if you lived in a rough neighborhood and you come to a door with a machete, as long as you stayed inside your residence. But she stepped out in the hallway on video and placed it against his neck, and he had not shown any threat at all. Do you know that the only thing she was charged with was a misdemeanor? Now, if that man's life wasn't in danger and an already a person that's proven that she can't keep her temper under control, that man's life was in danger. It was more than just a misdemeanor. Now we got in our justice system where nobody pays for anything that they've done. It's always somebody else's fault. But we're just taking a, we're just taking a, 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 a picture out of, a, a, out of Adam and Eve's life. You know, uh, Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the serpent. I really believe it's high time. Knowing the time, you know the time. It is high time to wake up out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. One of these days, one of these days, Jesus is going to come back like that thief in the night. And there are going to be people standing around like those in headlights. It happened. We need to get ready, and we need to get right. Britt, you and Cooper, come up, please. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes as we have this invitation this morning. I never have been one to talk negatively about another pastor unless it's just something blatant. I figure if I've never met him, never heard him, never been to his church, there's really not a whole lot I can say. I, I don't like hearsay, third-party information. But I've seen enough to know that for years, this is not a new thing, but for years, the problem is, is that with our technology that's able to, to take even a, a little service here at Erastus and, and have capabilities of somebody watching it in another part of the world, that's, that's what makes it more threatening. But you got, you got churches that are just eat up with the cancer of entertainment. We feel like we have to compete with the world. And see, I, I think that's a misconception. And this is what God's been dealing with my heart over the past two months is that Well, you're old-fashioned, people might say. You're old-fashioned. That's the old way of doing it. Well, whoever said that the old way was the wrong way? Why is it that people just can't come to church because they're looking for something different? And instead of us trying to scramble and scratch their ears and tickle their fancy and entertain them to death, why don't we just give them the love and attention that Jesus did to his own disciples and those that he crossed paths with when he walked on the face of this earth? I'm going to tell you what, good loving is better than good entertainment every single time. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your husband. Love your wife. Love this community. It's time. It's time. Father, thank you for this message, and as we extend this invitation, I pray, Lord, if there's someone that needs to make a decision for you, Lord, whatever that might be, may they make it today before it's too late. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Let's all stand this morning. Our invitation is going to be on page 483. <clears throat>
This last verse right here. This is it. If you'll take one These last few fleeting moments that you come. You've got a need lay it at the feet of the cross. At the feet of Jesus. after time. Time after time He has waited before and now He is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door Oh, how He wants to How he wants to come in. He wants to come in. Oh, good to see everybody. Thank you for coming. Enjoy uh, your day tomorrow, your time off. Uh, it, it, it's a somber occasion. Uh, let's remember those families. Pray, pray, pray for our country. It's time, folks. It's time that we quit playing church and got down to business. Valerie, this is for you. Okay? Folks, I want to invite all of us right now to pray over Valerie that God's will would be accomplished and her body might be ridden of whatever may or may not be there. Our God is an awesome God. Heavenly Father, we now come bound together in relationships with one another. We have our families of which we share blood and kinship. And then we have this church family of which again we share blood and kinship. We're a kin because of the, the personage of Jesus Christ. And Father, we have come at this moment for one thing, and that's to pray over Valerie Gentry, to pray, up, pray over her boys, her daughter, her husband, all of her family. But God, I pray and I call upon the great physician to reach down from the heights of glory and, Lord, restore her body. Lord, I ask you that you rid it of any infection that has come, that it would go away, it would subside, I pray. And I know that you can do it. God, I know that you're, that you're well capable. Let our faith be worthy of meeting the challenge. Our faith cannot waver. We cannot doubt. And so, God... Bless that entire family. Let them always walk in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and be ever closer to you than they ever have before. And then our church family, continue to pray for this family and others that are touched by tragedy. Dismiss us, O oh God, in your love and keep us under your watchful eye and your tender care until we come again. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Jimmy. Good to see you. Doing fine. <coughs> Buddy, good to see you. Good to see you. Miss Diane, yeah, oh yeah, finding frog wear, fair, hair split three ways, huh?
I do. And, and, well, it has been, but now in the last two months, all this stuff happened about two months ago. Uh, I get readings now in the mornings of about 128, 138. Below 150 is where my doctor wants me. So right now, 